Michael Bent has joined us live in our studio. Bob Neal, you hit it on the head. The very legitimate Michael Bent, 197 pounder, born in London, live in, you live in Queens, New York, three-time Golden Gloves champion. Michael, you fought the other day against the Bulgarian Rusinov, a lot closer than some people thought. What did you think of the judging? Mm, well, I'm not a judge, so I couldn't really um, speculate on that. But it's three as, two, they gave it to you. Right. I didn't think it was that close. I mean, my coaches didn't think it was that close. So I'm not really concerned about you know about how the judges thought. I know it's that I have to work much hard, harder next time, you know. Tell me about amateur boxing, of course, that's all you know, but you grow up trying to emulate pros. There's right. a vast difference, of course, and we see a lot of, uh, uh, we see a lot of amateur, we see a lot of professional fights. We only see the amateurs during the Goodwill Games, the Olympics and such. The big differences. The biggest difference is probably the, the rounds. Pros go 15, right. some 10, as opposed to amateurs who go three rounds. The most important thing is, is getting what you have to do done in those three rounds. It's fast pace. But there is, so there is a pace though. I mean, do you pace yourself in three heats? I mean, you, No, you can't afford to, right. if you do, the rounds no will slip right by. Right. No coasting at all. And do you think it's fair with the, uh, just a point of debate, if, if you could hit somebody and really, not lay them out, but really stagger them, right. and you could just touch somebody, and it's right. worth the same amount of points? No, I don't think it's fair because, um, uh, Especially the heavyweights. Right. Um, you should get points for effective blows. You know, some of the, some of the European fighters, particularly the, the Russians, just tap you primarily and they just build up points. Some of our guys use stiffer right hands, stiffer punches, period but they don't get the points for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's unfair. Michael, what about the, uh, the Eastern Bloc nations from what you've observed? You've only fought one guy so far, but you fought them before, right. I mean, before the Goodwill Games. Right. They're not as mechanical as they used to be, are they? They're not. Um, as a matter of fact, they try to get trying, kind of loose like the American style of boxing, but they're basically the same style fighters as, as they always were. Mm -hmm. You know, come at you straight, tough, um, you know. Not so much you can say about them, except that it comes in a straight line. You're one of the guys who has resurrected the lost art of body punching. A lot of fighters go for the head right away. Uh, where did that come from? Body punching? I guess it's a, a God-given gift, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, if you work on something, and you do it every day, night and day, and you drink, and you think about it, and you sleep about it, it'll come like second nature to you, so, you know. Who uh, were your heroes growing up? Uh, Roberto Duran and Muhammad Ali. Really? Yeah. Did you always want to be a fighter, boxer? I was always the kind of kid who <laughs> who had a lot of anxiety about was it, you know, inside of him. So yeah, I was always like a aggressive type kid. Yeah. I know your folks are now watching in Queens. Did they always want you to be a fighter, or was there a lot of resistance in the family? No, no one whatsoever. They've been um, very supportive, and my. My dad's a real big influence on me, you know, so they've been it's great about the whole thing, no beefs about it. Your dad hit the $2 million lottery in New York State. Uh, you gonna hit the jackpot here? I sure hope so. I got some plans on him the jackpot, yeah. How do you assess? Do you just take them one at a time? I know that sounds like a cliche, but do you yeah. size up the entire heavyweight field? Well, you try to, but again, you try not to jump the gun and count your, count your export that hatch because you never know who's here, who's not here. Michael, speaking of being here in Moscow, what is it like? Tell me about oh, anything man. funny happened to you yet? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing strange, but it's like it's like you're walking on a pillow all day, you know what I mean? You can't believe you're in Moscow. I mean, it's like a different world. It's like you're on Mars. Just, I mean, come to the Good World Games, the first Good World Games, we're pioneers, and, you know, it's strange. It's a strange feeling. It's a good way to look at it. Michael Bent, what about professional, up the road? I know you still want the Good World Games, right. the Olympics. Right. Definitely pro? Um, definitely. But right now, I'm just concentrating on, on being the best amateur that I can be. Um, pros down the line, I look, I look forward to that when the time comes, but right now, I'm just great amateur. Good luck in your chase for a gold medal, Michael Thank Bent. Thanks for being with us. Thank we'll you. be watching you. All right. And we'll be back. We'll have... Are both one and lost.